This episode of the ResortLoop.com podcast is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's is proud to be the official specialty coffee of Disney. Enjoy drinks and pastries at Joffrey's kiosks throughout the parks and check out the Disney specialty coffee collection only at Joffrey's.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our final boarding call, and the doors will be closing soon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us yet again. I don't know what's wrong with you people. This is ResortLoop.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. This is episode 218 or 210. I'm Tim Scott. I'm, I don't know if I want my name associated with this episode. <laughs> no. I'm Bob Collar. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. Oh, uh, uh, Tim, you're a little wound up today. What's going on? Well, we're, we're recording. This is a, well, it's a Tuesday. Yeah. We're fresh off yeah. the 24-hour event. I'm a little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excited from watching this past weekend's activities during the 24-hour event. Now, did you stay up for the entire 24 hours watching everybody on uh, Periscope? I, I, I t- tuned in a couple times, I'll be honest. Yeah, very good. I was watching very the Twitter, good. I'm watching the Facebook. It's uh, I'll be honest, it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, People are saying yeah. it's crazy, but I'm thinking, I, I think you might have to do it once. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Who do we got out there? Is that uh, Rebecca Toon? Rebecca out there Toon. She's, she's, she's been periscoping like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to ask her how, uh, how she liked it. Absolutely. So we'll have to get uh, Rebecca back on the show. So. Excellent. Well, we, Tim. We will need to twist her arm. Yeah. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> You're coming on the show. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah, it's a, they they do make uh, some of the folks down in Guantanamo come on the show. But uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Tim. Yes, Bob. Before we get started, I have a this day in day in Disney history, almost a daily history. <laughs> well, there's a daily issue to it, but what what happened today? Tuesday. This day in DisneyHistory.com. We we love that that website. Check them out. Uh, they have all kinds of cool stuff there. But this one this one's kind of sad. <laughs> oh. But kind of good. Oh, uh, back in 1986, your favorite decade. I, I know that you're well. <laughs> Epcot's Spaceship Earth reopens with a new narration by legendary newsman Walter Cronkite. And that's the way it was. A new finale song titled "Tomorrow's Child," and a new sponsor, AT and T classic so that's the second version who was the first version i don't remember his name yeah me neither <laughs> I, I remember i know i've heard it but i can't recall it for the life of me right right yeah we remember walter cronkite and then uh, who was the other one liam neeson no uh, jeremy <laughs> irons <laughs> <laughs> i know where you are i will hunt you down oh no that that's a whole different movie <laughs> he was going to be in there but he was taken away and yeah oh, uh, yeah wow. i don't know it's all i could come and, up with uh, and M from the uh, 007 movie. So, very cool. Yeah. yeah. That was back in 1986. Hard to believe, my friend. <laughs> Almost 30 years ago. Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Uh, anyway, Tim, what are we going to talk about today? Today, great topic. You came up with this one. It's a twist on what a lot of shows have talked about. They've talked about what you need to do right. at Walt Disney World. They also talk about what you shouldn't do at Walt Disney World. Mm. What was the topic you came up with, Bob? <laughs> what would you never do again? I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and we put that out to Looper Nation, and man, they came through again like they always do. So uh, why don't you start us off, Tim? I will start off with a member of the blogging team. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chris Malik. He goes, okay, I would never again visit the downtown Disney world of disney store on new year's eve night (laughs) oh wow with his three kids (laughs) he said i thought i might have to start throwing haymakers (laughs) just to leave in one piece but instead he tucked his head and put the stroller into steam roller mode that's what you got (laughs) to do sometimes you just got to go you got to throw that cow catcher on the front (laughs) and just start plowing (laughs) oh 
Yeah, I you know what? I, I hadn't thought about that, but how about downtown Disney is just jam packed. Oh, with folks on New Year's Eve. And then, you know, trying to keep three kids in tow and keep them all corralled. And oh, yeah, he's he's way outnumbered with three kids. Oh, yeah. So. They're running the zone defense there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, hey, Michael Black, good pal of the show, Michael Black, another blogger oh. for us. Uh, he, he says, uh, and this is quite appropriate, I will never attend another 24 hour event at Magic Kingdom. Ooh, that fits in. What an absolute nightmare. Oh. But he goes on to say, everyone have fun this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> See you, suckers. Uh, I, he, didn't ala- he didn't elaborate, so no. we don't know what happened with poor Michael. We'll have to get him on the show to explain his 24-hour event. Exactly. And we'll hear from Nightmare. this latest one from, we'll get Rebecca on. I'm sure we can talk her into it. Absolutely. Original Looper, Joe Quattrochi. Joe. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> he goes, I will never, ever show up to the world without proper planning, which include, and is not limited to, making all his dinner reservations, Fast Pass Plus reservations, golf tea times, tours, etc. Disney World is an amazing place when you are prepared in advance, but Disney World can also be a miserable place if you are waiting in long lines, shut out of your favorite attractions and restaurants, and constantly trying to find an opening to eat for, or, you know, what attractions to go on. Then he goes with a hashtag, Happy Super Looper. There you go. That's true. A lot of planning. If you want to have a, you know, trip without a hitch. Right. Right. Well, look, you know, look how long it took me to get into Ohana's, and I still didn't get into Ohana's. I, you still don't know how it happened. I, I rode on the coattails <laughs> of the Porter. So, uh, and again, thank you for that. Uh, that was uh, that was a wonderful time, and it, he's exactly right, you know. So keep that in mind. Make sure you get everything handled prior to your trip so it goes a little smoother absolutely uh james price says uh astro orbiter he'll never do astro orbiter again said nearly made my lunch launch (laughs) oh (laughs) (laughs) i've also given up on space mountain i always feel like i've been punched and kicked by several old men when i get off the ride (laughs) do they punch and kick different than he must know. I mean, I don't know what, he, I don't know what he's <laughs> really? normally doing on his touring, but hey. <laughs> what is he doing? We're not here to judge. Uh, food-wise, <laughs> he says uh, he, he'll never do Cinderella's Royal Table. Uh, that's out uh, just uh, because it's so expensive. And, uh, oh, and I ha- have you ever had the pressed brioche? Is it brioche? Yeah, I think it is brioche. Ice cream sandwich at La Artisan de Glaces in uh, Epcot. No, I haven't. He says, "Don't." Oh, <laughs> it's ice cream on bread, man. I all on all in caps. He reiterates, "Ice cream on bread." Hmm. So I don't. I, I, that does sound a little odd to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite the ice cream sandwich we're used to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Ian Hetherington uh, joins us. He goes, "A uh, great question and really hard to answer, as we have so many must dos." Like watching fireworks, meeting characters, doing the mountains, etc. Because anyway, our absolute must-do attraction would be Typhoon Lagoon on day one. Mm. Traveling from the UK is a long, and the time difference takes its toll. So it's a great way to unwind and kick to start their holiday. Our must-do restaurant would be La Cellier. Being a family of carnivores, their steaks blow up, <laughs> blow them away every time. Our never-do attraction would be Timon and Pumbaa's Circle of Life at Epcot. You know the movie there. Ooh, yeah. Unless I needed a place to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant-wise, he would not do a Pizza Planet in Hollywood Studios again. He says bad quality and high price. Yeah, it's a little bit a little bit pricey for uh, their resort pizza. Yes. Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. And then, uh, hey, how about that? Ian <laughs> also says he agrees with Joe's point on planning. <laughs> it's his, that's his number one advice to his friends. It's funny because the printer just texted me, printed out something we printed out, I think, last night. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's been laying in the queue. It's almost like a uh, a slot machine. We just won. Yay! <laughs> Is it? Did you finally get the... Uh... Those uh, lottery tickets uh, or lottery numbers What's from... Uh, That's what the printout is here. Oh, no. Lee? It appears to be a bracket. It's probably from the March Madness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you need to get a newer printer. Yeah, we might need to. <laughs> hmm. Oh, my gosh. All right. Good pal of the show, Jed Penna, says, uh, I'm never going to leave 
just because of rain again. Uh, we have had some fond memories in our ponchos strolling down empty streets at Epcot during a rain while everyone is huddled in the shops. Now, lightning, that may be a different story. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Hold that selfie stick down. As, <laughs> just stay safe. Come on. Oh, hey, Tim Fal- Falcio- Falcioni. Sorry about that, Tim. Although I love your first name. I will never, ever wait for buses again. I always suspected I lost a lot of time on the buses, so the last time, he used them exclusively on a trip, and he kept track of the time it took to wait for and then ride them over a five-day period. The Mm. result? This surprised me. Eight hours and 33 minutes on the bus. Wow. He says, unacceptable. When he used his own car the next year, two hours and 56 minutes, so just under three hours. Wow. He goes, I don't know about you, but I work hard for those five and a half extra hours of vacation time and would rather be spending them in the parks. Yeah. I, I mean, I could see that. I could see that. But uh, I will say this, Tim. Hmm. The, the um, you know, sometimes taking that bus to Magic Kingdom is a better option, especially kind of midday when you're not, there's not a lot of people heading over there because everybody's gone over for the earlier morning. Uh, because it drops you off right there, right there, and you have to wait for the monorail or the, uh, or the, the or the ferry. ferry. Exactly. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, you've got either the monorail or the ferry. Then you got to wait for a tram. Right. And sometimes, right. I'll be honest, the people waiting for that tram aren't always the most polite bunch. Right. Right. Because yeah. everyone's hot so, and cranky and wants to get home. I I agree with them maybe on uh, all of the other uh, parks, but uh, Magic Kingdom's a whole different animal because of. Uh, Hi, where the parking lot is. It is. Now, that so. being said, we drive there, too. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, that, those were all our our, uh, our suggestions on uh, Facebook. And then uh, we, we had a bunch on Twitter. To the Twitter. Uh, to the Twitter. Uh, Pink Shoes goes by at Pink Shoes on the Twitter. It says uh, simply dinosaur. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Would never do dinosaur again. I enjoyed that last time I was on it. Of course, it had been a couple of years. You know, uh, dinosaur, and, and maybe it was because we were at uh, uh, Animal Kingdom at night, but dinosaur scared the heck out of my son this time. A very good simulation is to have your child yell at you yes. while you're riding on the uh, Home Depot paint shaker. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to know how you know that. <laughs> There's <laughs> a Home Depot down the street. Uh, you're, not, you're not allowed in there anymore, are you? No, no, I've been going to Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa uh, Spagnuolo, hope I got you right there, Missy. She goes, uh, Stitch's great escape. She loves Stitch, but she hates the ride. It gives her a headache. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to the Stitch movie. We have that in uh, the DVD player of the van, so I listen to that sometimes. It's still a great Mm. movie. That movie holds up. Love the movies. I actually like all the the movies afterwards as well. Okay. They did a good job. Now, the, the... TV show was so-so. It was all right. Yeah. I mean, but then it was made for kids, not for grown-ups. So, uh, but uh, yeah, good point, uh, Missy. Thank you. Uh, Epcot, Epcod, uh, at Epcod, underscore Epcod on the Twitter says, uh, uh, the thing that they would never do again. Yes. Is forget to get some Joffrey's coffee. Amen, Epcod. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mike Simmons. He goes by at Mike S. Ohio. Oh, he might be another local for us. He goes via Napoli. Not a critic of thin thin pizza. Just had a recent poor experience. The pizza was undercooked and not very uh, flavorful. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because that that got uh, big ratings on our uh, uh, Looper listener poll. It did. I wonder what kind of pizza you had there. Yeah, might, might have just got a bad time. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Kevin at Terrible Pirate Seven says uh, the thing he would never do again is uh, use snack credits on chocolate milk. <laughs> talk uh, about talk about buyer's remorse. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about that. Don't take the ice cream bars home. Probably not a good idea to take chocolate milk home either <laughs> yeah. as a snack. Yeah, don't shove those in your suitcase. Oh, <laughs> Pat Janetti says uh, from at. Daily Walt Disney, New Year's Eve at Epcot. It was great to do once and say I did it, but it was so crowded and difficult to do much and hear anyone. Oh, wow. I was going to say, and- Epcot is uh, usually the one they say to go to because you know it absorbs people so much better. But man, can you imagine how many people were there? 
Right, right. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. We've heard good things about that's the place to be for New Year's because it's it's bigger, uh, more open. But uh, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rebecca Toon, speaking of Rebecca Toon. Rebecca. Uh, goes by at BeccaBerry73. Follow her on Twitter so you can see what she's doing for the 24 hours. Uh, she uh, agrees and says Astro Orbiter. Um, she goes on to say, clowns on crackers. I thought I was going to be flung right out of Magic Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I did ride that once, and I thought I heard steel bending. So that was the last <laughs> time I went on that one. <laughs> Not good. No, no, no. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Chris Bean from at Run Sasagula says, never stay n- say never, but most of Disney Highway Studios and the uh, Canadian Pavilion at Epcot, and he's even Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, do you, yeah, you don't need to go to the Canadian Pavilion. You you live there. That's right. It's like going yeah. home. But uh, I'm going to just say, Chris, you're going to be uh, spending an awful lot of time at uh, Disney Hollywood Studios in the near future, I think. I think a lot of people are going to. Yes, and it won't be the Hollywood Studios then either. No, it won't. Mm. Mm. What? Uh, good pal of the show, Scott Campbell, um, over there at uh, Dixie Landings Radio, uh, says, uh, I must eat a turkey leg, and I must never not visit anymore. Those are, uh, is, it, he's, is he throwing double negatives at us? Um, he might not, yes, not be. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, never, ever, not, ever, not going to, I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> He likes turkey legs, and he's going again. He's going again. There yeah, we go. Absolutely. Oh, good friend of the show, Emily, from At First Comes Walt Disney World. Hey, Emily. I, one of the bloggers. This one is controversial, but she says dessert parties. Ooh. Mm-hmm. The dessert was fine, but we still had to stand and jockey for spots to see the fireworks. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Because mm. those aren't uh, inexpensive. No, they're not. We're going to have to have her back on the show to talk about... Uh... To talk about that, because I thought those were that. That's why you had the dessert party, so that uh, you had plenty of room to uh, see the fireworks up close and personal. Yes, interesting. Dun 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 dun. All right, Tim. Thank you, everybody in Looper Nation. That was wonderful. We we love getting that feedback. You all know that. Uh, thanks for participating, and uh, we'll have something else coming up. Uh, very soon. We still got another Looper listener poll that we're going to put out here, Tim. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, thank you all for participating in that. So now, Tim. Yes. What would you, Tim Scott, or Resort Loop Tim at, no, <laughs> or, what is it? What, Tim, are you doing? what is your Facebook? Res- Tim Resort Loop Scott. Tim, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> what, what, what would you Never do again. Well, I'll say I've never done it, and we've not done it forever because it was, it's just got to be a pain. But it sounded like a lot of fun before. Is a uh, change resorts multiple times on a vacation. Yes, you know, packing up and moving. If you're there for like maybe a week, a week and a half, and you want to change resorts once, I could see it. Right, but I wouldn't. I personally, I don't think I would be changing resorts too terribly often if I didn't have to. Right, I just want to get there, unpack. Have camp set up and just go. I agree with you 100%. One, one and done. Yeah, yeah. One and done. Because, I mean, I don't like to pack. You know, who likes to pack and repack and unpack? And you don't want to take right. that time out of your vacation just to change a resort. Now, if it's budgetary and you have to change, you know, go for it. But if it can right. be avoided, well, I would suggest not changing resorts. There you go. Well, I mean, like we talked about it. If you're going to do that, stay at a value resort. And you're going to change resorts so that you can experience another resort but then you're you're not you're not changing resorts and then going back into the parks yes that makes that makes no sense at all yeah you're going to change resorts and then you're going to stay in that uh you know moderate or deluxe resort just to have that experience yeah but visit the other resorts and know where you might want to stay next time absolutely yeah yeah that's that's a good one yeah that's a good one how about you bob what would you not Um, do again well i would never ever um Jump through uh, the plexiglass of a golf cart and drive over. Oh no, that wasn't me. Oh, I did my best to cover you. <laughs> cover you on that one. Oh, yeah. That, no, that was not us uh, here in Northeast well, Ohio. It wasn't me. <laughs> Neither one of us near live anywhere near Mentor 
Ohio. That was not <laughs> us. Uh, no, actually, um, I would. First off, I would never ever do <laughs> another expedition Everest challenge because, of course, they don't do them anymore. Right, right. Um, but uh, you know, I. <sighs> This is tough. This is, is. I didn't even think of a, uh, an answer myself, but uh, I, you know what? I'm never going to do this again, and we've done this several, several times, and that is the commando uh, hitting all four parks in one day. Okay, uh, it's it's too much. It's I'm I'm not. We we've been there enough that we know where to hit the the ones to hit, but it is so much running. Uh, you don't truly get to experience the parks. Um, the last time we were there, we l- literally ran into the studios, didn't really get to look at anything, just ran to the, th- the three rides we had fast passes for and then booked out of the studios to run over to Magic Kingdom. And you just don't get you don't get the experience when you're when you're hitting all of those parks uh, commando style. So I, I'm I've done it. I've can say i've done it i've done it a few times and i'm i'm done that that's enough for you're me. out i'm out so i want to enjoy when i go down there i want to i want to enjoy myself and and slow down i just want to slow down a little bit yeah enjoy the parks so tim yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> turn your printer off because that is all i've got excellent it is turned off because i'm out of ink now <laughs> <laughs> but everybody, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for all the feedback on the shows and the continuing support there over at the website. Check out the blog with all our bloggers over there. They're doing a fantastic job. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Resort Loop Tim. I'm on Facebook at Tim Resort Loop Scott and the website I just mentioned, ResortLoop.com. And don't forget, uh, I am uh, Resort Loop Bob on the Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Facebook forward slash Resort Loop where we post most of these questions. And um, rate us on iTunes. Where else can they listen to I could listen on the Stitcher. Oh, and maybe soon, later this summer on Spotify. What? I know. Things are blowing up. How about that? Excellent. Everybody, thanks for joining us. This has been the Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. Nineteen thirty-nine. The Hollywood Tower Hotel was a star, a beacon for the show business elite. Until five people stepped through the door of an elevator and into a nightmare. Now that door has opened once again. For you. (laughs) 